Okay, Nancy, make sure you smile for the camera. Say good morning. As you know, there are Americans uh, who are being evicted from their homes. They can't pay the rent. Many Americans uh, are waiting in food lines for the first time in their lives. Uh, can you look them in the eye, Madam Speaker, and explain why you don't want to accept the president's latest stimulus offer? Well, because, uh, thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, Wolf, and I, I hope you'll ask the same question of the Republicans about why they don't really want to meet the needs of the American people. Look, I get that the Republican plan doesn't do as much as we'd like, but we need a stimulus package. But let me say to those people, because all of my colleagues, we represent these people. Uh, I have for over 30 years represented my constituents. Not very well. Uh, I know what their needs are. I listen to them, and their needs are not addressed in the president's proposal. So when you say to me, why don't you accept theirs, why don't they accept ours? Our legislation is there uh, to do three things primarily, to honor our workers, our, honor our heroes, our healthcare workers, our police and fire first responders, our teachers, our transportation, sanitation, food workers, the people who make our lives work. We couldn't be doing what we're doing without them. Many of them have risked their lives so that they had to save lives, and now they will lose their jobs because but they really, McConnell they says really, let the states go bankrupt. Excuse me for let interrupting, the states go bankrupt. Ma Madam Speaker. Mm -hmm. but Let's be clear about what the Republican plan does not contain. It does not contain a national plan for testing, tracing, and surveillance. Now, there's a number of people who feel that the tracing and surveillance plans that have been floating around here and there would be intrusive. Are they? I don't know. It apparently doesn't give enough money to state and local governments. It doesn't specifically help black communities. It doesn't contain tax cuts for working families. It doesn't contain any sort of robust rental assistance beyond delaying landlords' ability to evict tenants. It doesn't enforce any sort of national work safety standards. It doesn't contain childcare help. And it doesn't contain anything to help with the election process. Now, are these things needed? Some of them would be quite helpful, especially, you know, rental assistance. You know, maybe some tax cuts for working families. It's especially strange that Republicans don't want to give tax cuts to working families and giving child tax credits or any of that since they're the party that usually brags about tax cuts. But as we know, they're all about tax cuts for the rich because they believe in trickle-down economics or, you know, supply-side economics because people get offended at calling it trickle-down. But uh, that's what they try to push, and it doesn't work. Now, what ends up happening in some of these stimulus packages that the Democrats are pushing is that they want to insert a bunch of unrelated things into it. And, of course, Republicans aren't going to have any of that. Now, usually the Republicans try to insert some things for their rich friends into this sort of thing, too, so they're guilty of this as well. But the Democrats are really good at this, you know? And then when the, the Republicans don't want to pass it, they can the, the Democrats go, oh, you're against all of these things over here. And they're like, no, we're against these things that you inserted into it that didn't need to be there. They really need the money right now. Uh, and even members of, I of your own... I understand that, but your, if... But even if members you of your own caucus... Question. Even the members of your own caucus, Madam Speaker, uh, want to accept this deal. $1.8 trillion. Congressman Ro Khanna, no, no, for example. Minute, well, let, me just, let me just quote Ro Khanna, a man you know well. I assume you admire him. He's a Democrat. Hey, it looks like that stung a little bit, didn't it? And he just said this. He said, people in need can't wait until February. $1.8 trillion is significant and more than twice the Obama stimulus. Make a deal. Put the ball in McConnell court. So what do you say to Ro Khanna? What I say to you is, I don't know why you're always an apologist, and many of your colleagues apologist for the Republican position. So calling you out, Nancy, and wanting a stimulus package to arrive sooner than later is now considered being an apologist to the GOP?
That's very interesting, Nancy. You're not being interviewed by Fox News. This is Wolf Blitzer on CNN. Rokana, that's nice. That isn't what we're going to do, and nobody's waiting till February. I want this very much now, because people need help now. But it's no use giving them a false thing just because the president wants to put a, a check with his name on it in the mail that we should not be doing all we can to help people pay the rent, put food on the table, to enhance benefits, that they don't lose their jobs if they're state and local. That they, that this, we're talking about the consequences of a pandemic, that the symptoms of a problem that the president refuses to address. But you know, and that is, and Speaker, that is the coronavirus. We know, that we, is we the, know coronavirus. the problem out there, but there are millions of Americans who have lost their jobs. They can't pay the rent. Their kids need the food. That's right, and that's what we're trying to get done. $1.8 trillion, and the president just tweeted, stimulus, go big or go home. He wants even more that's right. right now, so why that's not? Right. That's right, that's right, amen, hallelujah. So why are you doing this, Nancy? Why not work out That's a deal right. with him and don't let the perfect, as they say here in Washington, be the enemy of the good? Well, I will not let the wrong be the enemy of the right. What's wrong with $1.8 trillion? Dollars? Well, I, you know what? Do you have any idea what the difference is between the spending that they have in their bill and that we have in our bill? Do you realize that they have come back and said all these things for child tax credits and earned income tax credits or helping people who have lost their jobs are eliminated in their bill? Do you realize they pay no respect to the fact that child care is very important for people whose children cannot go to school because they're doing remote learning, and yet they minimize the need for child care, which is the... Is the threshold with which people, mothers and fathers, can go to work if they have that. Do you have any idea of how under, that's precisely uh, why, Madam short, Speaker, they're that, concerned? That's why it's so, it's so important right now. Yesterday, I spoke to Andrew Yang, who says the same thing. It's not everything you yeah, want, but, you know but what? there's you, a lot okay. there. Honest to God, you really, uh, I can't get over it, because Andrew Yang, he's lovely. Yo Khan, he's lovely. Do you mean it, Nancy? Do you really mean it? Honest? They are not negotiating this situation. They have no idea of the particulars. They have no idea of what the language is here. I didn't come over here to have you. So you're the apologist for the Obama, excuse me. God forbid. Madam, Madam Speaker, I'm, I'm not Barack an apologist. Obama. I'm asking you for, serious questions because so many people I'm are in desperate you need we, right now. Nancy. You know how this administration is. You know how Republicans have become since we've had this administration. They're not willing to compromise on hardly anything. If you want a compromise to be made, you have to put in a lot more effort. You've kind of got to kiss Trump's ass. That's how it is. And if you don't, you settle for what you can get. Let me yeah. ask you this. Okay. When was the last time? Let me, you, let me respond well, to well, you. Let me ask you, you. When was the last time, Madam questions. Speaker, when was the last time you spoke with the president about this? I don't speak to the president. Speak Why with not? his, Why his not representative. Call him. Why not call him and say, Mr. President, let's work out a deal. It's not going to be everything you want. Not going to be everything I want. But there are so many Americans right now who are in desperate need. Let's make a deal. What makes me amused, if it weren't so sad, is how you all think that you know more about the suffering of the American people than those of us who are elected by them to represent them at that table. Chocolate. Really? Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate candy. Oh, wow. And this is, this is something you can get through the mail. Oh, my. Wow. Other people in our family go for some other flavors, but chocolate and then we have some other chocolate here <laughs> and we just got it restocked with the ice cream uh, right for easter sunday because we were shall we say enjoying i don't know what i would have done if ice cream were not invented because you know that's how you show that you can relate with the general public by showing off twelve thousand dollar freezers and ice cream come to chinatown uh, it is unfortunate that we do not have shared values with this White House and that they have in their bill 
why don't you talk about in their bill a tax break for the wealthiest families in the country while they cut out the earned income tax credit for the poorest families in our country. Now that's a valid point. Again, Republicans seem to be all about giving tax breaks to the rich and not really helping out the poor and middle class very much. That's a valid point. And the poorest children in our country. Uh, that we have to fight with them to get them to address the coronavirus crisis because they have said it was a hoax, it was magical, it was a miracle, it was going to cure it. It hasn't. I agree. The Trump administration has been awful about this. But Nancy, so were you in the beginning. But that doesn't excuse how Trump continues to treat this coronavirus as if it's nothing. Having rallies where he's going around saying, oh, I want to kiss all of you. One thing with me, the nice part, I went through it. Now they say I'm immune. I can feel, I feel so powerful. I'll walk into that audience. I'll walk in there. I'll kiss everyone in that audience. I'll kiss the guys and the beautiful women and them. Everybody, I'll just give you a big fat kiss. It's just like, dude, what, what's wrong with you? And that's why we find ourselves in this situation. I feel very confident about the knowledge that I bring to this, but more importantly, the knowledge that my chairs, our chairs of jurisdiction, science-based, academically uh, uh, documented, institutionally uh, suggested in terms of what the cost would be to do it and to do it that way. And about, say, we talk about uh, child care, yes. We're talking about safety in the workplace. Safety in the workplace. That's a very important issue, especially in the time of pandemics. Especially during the time of a pandemic? So what I say to those people is, we're going to get a deal. And when we do, it will be retroactive. It will be retroactive. Here's, a, here's what you wrote in a letter to House Democrats, Madam Speaker. And I ask these questions only, as you know, so many millions of Americans are suffering right now. Well, you right quote now. two people who know nothing about the agreement. Well, or not, there is no uh, agreement. But what the suggestions are is if there's some authority on the subject. Please, uh, give uh, equal weight to 12, uh, I, to all of the chairmen on the committee who have written this but bill. But so many of your fellow Democrats in the House, they want a deal right now. No, they, that isn't. The problem solvers, they they all want a deal right now. Yeah. And, and here's what they're complaining about, because you wrote a letter to House Democrats and you said this. Let yeah. me read a line from the letter uh, you wrote. The president only wants his name on a check to go out before Election Day and for the market to go up. Is that what this is all about? Uh, not allow the president to take credit if there's a deal that no, will help millions of Americans that. right now? He's not that important. But let me say this. With all due respect, with all due respect, and you know we've known each other a long time, you really don't know what you're talking about. Well, Nancy sounds like Trump right now, doesn't she? If the plural of anecdote is not data. Yes, there's some people who said this or that. Overwhelmingly, my caucus wants what is right for the American people. Overwhelmingly, our chairman who wrote the bill, read their statements. They all put out their own statements when they saw what the White House was proposing. So do a service to the issue and have some level of respect for the people who have worked on these issues, written the bill to begin with. Now, let me just say this in terms of the numbers. I want people to do the math. We had 3.4, which would meet the needs of the American people for a sustained period of time so that there was some certainty in what would happen. The Republicans said, no, well, so we took it down a trillion dollars by cutting the time. We took it down another two trillion dollar, 200 trillion, 200, excuse me, 200 billion dollars. So we're now 1.200 billion dollars down. We came down to 2.2. At the same time, since tomorrow will be five months since we passed the bill, at the same time, the small, because there was no resolution, Mitch McConnell said, let's pause. The virus didn't pause, and now we're at a place where we need more money. We need more money for PPP, for our small businesses. We need more money for our airlines. We need more money for our schools. So we have absorbed nearly a half a trillion dollars more of expenses still within the I understand all of that, and I have only the greatest back. respect so for you. So do the math. Madam we have Speaker, come down, I have only the greatest we have respect come down for you. Uh, I have just want to point out, though, $1.8 trillion. $1.8 trillion is a lot of money 
The American people need that money ASAP because they're suffering right now. And I, I'm, I'm not saying it's perfect, but I'm and saying... And you don't care how it's spent. Well, and you don't I, care I care, how it's of course, spent. how it's spent. But I, what I well, don't, don't understand even know is how it's why, spent. Not, why not you talk to the president spent. personally, call him up and say, Mr. President, let's get a deal tomorrow. Look, let me say this. The president has sent Mr. Mnuchin to negotiate. That's what we've done with other presidents. This isn't unusual. Nancy... This situation is unusual. It's not time for business as usual. With President Bush, we had we did this quite a bit because that's how you negotiate. You and then you take it to the president. This Mr. Mnuchin, I think he has integrity representing he wants his a position. Deal. I, I may I finish, please. But his he has integrity representing his position. But his position has no integrity. They do not share our values. Have a little respect for the fact that we know something about these subjects. And there's a big difference between Democrats and Republicans in whether they want to give a big tax cut to the wealthiest people in the country. In their bill, in the CARES Act, we tried to take it out in this bill. Instead, they took out uh, earned income tax credit, child tax credit, expanded health benefits to um, on, uh, uh, UI benefits to the extent that it was agreed to before. All right. So this is, uh, I have every confidence in what, uh, and the arguments that we make because it's based on science and uh, documentation. Our chairs know their stuff. They know what they're doing with all due respect to the kind of people you were referencing. And I welcome their enthusiasm. I welcome their interest. I welcome their originality of their thinking. But the fact is, we have a responsibility to meet the needs of the American people in a retroactive way, so they're not at a total loss. They are at a loss because the president has ignored the virus. Right. I wish you would spend time on the fact that if he had not ignored the virus, we wouldn't be in the position we're in. But we are. And what we are. And let me say about that also, I hope that uh, I'm pleased that these um, pharmaceutical companies are taking the responsible position to halt and hopefully then resume uh, because we want the public to have confidence in whatever therapies or whatever vaccines come along, that they will take them. Right. And to people who say, well, I don't trust Trump on that, if we trust the uh, uh, Food and Drug Administration for what, for what they are doing, the scientists there who've been working 24-7 for months and months and months, excellent science, the science should call the shot. And when they let's do, uh, we hope, should all and, trust and, it. And let's hope they get more treatments. Let's hope they get a vaccine. And Madam Speaker, I, yes. I res certainly respect you, but I also respect Ro Khanna. I respect Andrew Yang. I respect members of the Democrats who are members of the problem solvers. Man, look how much she was cringing and then trying to cover it up in the end, right? They want a deal because so many people right now well, are Well, the problem suffering. solvers, by the way, don't have any earned income tax credit or child tax credit in their proposal either. But let's not but go into that. Yeah, we, you evidently do that. not respect the chairman of the committees who I re wrote these I respect, bills. I respect all of you. And I wish you would respect the knowledge that goes into getting, uh, the, uh, the, the meeting the needs of the American people. But again, you've been on JAG defending the administration all this time with no knowledge of the difference. He's defending the administration because he's criticizing some of what you and some of the other Democrats have been doing? between our two bills, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to say that to you in person. Right. Madam Speaker, these are, these are incredibly difficult times right now, uh, and we'll leave it on that note. Thank you so much yeah. for joining us. No, we'll us. leave it on the vote that you are not right on this, Wolf, and I hate to say that to All you, right. but I feel confident about it, and I feel confident about my colleagues, and I feel confidence in my chairs. And it's not about me, it's about millions of Americans who can't put food on the table, who can't pay the rent, and we represent them. And we represent them. Getting and by we represent on these them. long food and lines we represent that we're seeing. Them. I know we you know are. Them. I'm, I'm just we saying. We represent them and we know them. As we, we say. We know them. We represent them. Don't let yes. the perfect be the enemy of the good, as they say. It is here nowhere in near perfect. Madam Speaker. It's always the case, but we're not even close to the good. All right. Let's see what happens because every day is critically, critically important. Good morning.